Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 minute moan and the topic of this 10 minute moan is quite a ridiculous claim made by the United Nations that the UNRWA workers in Gaza should be immune from any prosecution which I find a bit weird Anyway, this, this story comes about due to something I wasn't sure of. Uh, I hadn't heard of this before. But the Israeli victims of Hamas October 7 atrocities have filed a lawsuit in New York against the UNRWA, UNRWA. I'll just read from the Foundation for Defence of Democracies. It's a website. And they said, uh, I'm trying to see the date on this actually. It was some time ago. They reported that a group of more than 100 Israeli plaintiffs composed of victims of October 7 Hamas atrocities along with their families filed a lawsuit in New York on the 24th of June demanding over a billion pounds, sorry a billion dollars in damages from the United Nations agency dedicated to Palestinian refugees and their descendants. The 167 page lawsuit filed with the US District Court in Manhattan has directed against seven current and former top United Nations Relief and Workers Agencies, UNRWA, officials who are accused of knowing that Hamas siphoned off more than a billion dollars from the agency to pay for, amongst other things, tunneling equipment and weapons that aided its attack on Israel on October the 7th. The New York Times reported the seven defendants included UNRWA's current Commissioner General, Philip Lazzarini, as well as its former General, Pierre Cranbill, who is now the Director General of the International Committee for Red Cross. Philip Grandi, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, and Greta Gunnan Sordat, Director of UNRWA's New York office. The Israeli plaintiffs include Ditsa Hyman, one of more than 250 hostages abducted by Hamas terrorists on October the 7th, who has recalled in an exchange deal the following month, who, sorry, was released in an exchange deal the following month, and Gadi and Ruma Kedem, whose daughter Tamir, son-in-law Yonif, and three grandchildren, Shahar, Arbel, and Omar, were all murdered by Hamas in their home in Kibbutz, near Oz. A spokesperson for UNRWA, Juliet Tumo, told the New York Times she was aware of the lawsuit but emphasised the United Nations, including UNRWA, enjoy immunity from, from legal process, as do United Nations officials, including those serving with UNRWA. Now this is bizarre. One thing, it's a pretty strange law to claim, but her choice of words, they enjoy immunity. I just find that quite disturbing actually that you would use such such words. Expert analysis includes Hamas has long used charities to finance its terror against Israel. It's unconceivable but not surprising that the UN is part of this terror financing scheme. Not another cent US, European or otherwise should line the coffers of the genocidal group. David May, the research manager of Senior Research Analyst. And then there's a load of people saying the uh, Similar things. The lawsuit states that UNRWA knownly provided Hamas with US dollars. Now this bit's phenomenal. In cash that it needed to pay smugglers for weapons, explosives and other terror materials. The allegation is based on UNRWA's practice of paying its 13,000 employees in Gaza in US dollars. Using cash transported to Gaza from the branch of the Arab Bank in the West Bank city of Ramallah. UNRWA employees would then convert their payments into Israeli shekels so they could buy stuff. The currency used in Gaza, utilising Hamas money changers who took 10 to 25% spread on transactions, ensuring that predictable percentage of UNRWA's payroll went to Hamas, according to the lawsuit. So what they're claiming here, this is just madness. So the 13,000 UNRWA um, employees that, that live in Gaza and the West Bank they're paid in notes in hard cash they then go to Hamas 
and exchange it for shekels and they take their cut from 13,000 people's wages. That, I always wondered how they get the money. But that's remarkable. Another thing that I've always found odd about UNRWA is UNRWA are always on the lookout for donations for water, for fuel, um, for um, medicines, etc. Because they're always short of that. Gaza is always short of power, water, food, and medical supplies. But it's never short of bullets and bombs. And I've never quite been able to figure that out. That's never sat nice with me. In addition, the lawsuit charged that UNRWA knowingly provided material supports to Hamas in Gaza by allowing the terror group safe harbour and its facilities, including schools and other buildings used for weapons storage or command centres. The resulting atrocities were foreseeable and defendants are liable for aiding and abetting Hamas genocide, crimes against humanity and torture, the lawsuit said. In a statement in April, the Israeli foreign minister charged that Hamas and UNRWA had integrated to an extent that it is impossible to say where UNRWA ends and Hamas begins. Released ahead of the publication of the UN Commission report that largely exonerated UNRWA on the question of its collaboration with Hamas, the statement asserted, if more than 2,135 UNRWA employees are members of Hamas and Islamic Jihad, and a fifth of its principles of UNRWA schools are Hamas activists. The problem with UNRWA Gaza is not a problem of a few bad apples. It is poisoned and rotten tree whose roots are Hamas. Israel, whose parliament passed a preliminary bill to designate UNRWA as a terror organisation in May 29th, has long accused UNRWA of supporting and employing members of Hamas, including at least 15 UNRWA employees who played a direct role in the October 7th massacre. According to Israel, UNRWA also ignores Hamas' use of its facilities, such as Hamas' data centre, discovered underneath UNRWA's Gaza headquarters in February. This is mind-blowing stuff. How simple is that idea of how to get paid? Pay all your UNRWA staff in dollars, make them cha change it for shekels in Gaza, and Hamas do the... the um, the transfer and the exchange and take a cut. So that way you don't show lumps of money going straight to Hamas. It's quite frightening when you think about it. And what brought me to attention was a story that came out today and in the Israeli website saying UNRWA demands immunity for employees implicated in the October 7th massacre. And I thought, immunity from who? The UN, with the support of the US Department of Justice, claims UNRWA employees who participated in the October massacre have immunity from prosecution. So the US Department of Justice are agreeing with us. In an official document submitted to the US court, the UN, backed by US Department of Justice, claimed that UNRWA employees who participated in the October 7th massacre be granted immunity from press prosecution. A full 10% of UNRWA employees are affiliated with the terror group and at least 12 UNRWA employees participated directly in the October 7th massacre. Six were part of the wave of terrorists who breached the border fence and participated in the assault. Two helped kidnap Israelis. Two were tracked to sites where scores of Israelis were massacred and others coordinated logistics for the attack, including the procurement of weapons. Yet they according to the US Department of Justice, are immune from prosecution. It is mind-blowing stuff. It is absolutely scary. In documents submitted to the US court, it's claimed that UNRWA employees who participated in the massacre have immunity. Since the UN has not waived their immunity in this case, its subsidiary organisation, UNRWA, continues to enjoy absolute immunity from prosecution and the lawsuit, lawsuit should be dismissed. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to start following this, this case a wee bit. I didn't know about it until this morning. But it seems to me beggar belief. Why would any UN official have automatic immunity from prosecution? 
surely there must be guidelines as to what is and what isn't allowed to be immune. And, I, and I'm, I, I'm trying to figure out why. Because UN delegates, they've got to be accountable. But if they're totally immune from laws anywhere in the world, why? I'm trying to think of situations where they would be. But to, this is basically a, a war crimes trial. That's a, in essence what it is. I can't, I can't figure out why it should be an automatic default that these people, or anybody in the UN for that matter, um, should be immune from any sort of prosecution. Israel has for some time pursued action against UNRWA both domestically and abroad, including court cases and promoting legislation to have the organisation dissolved. Along with state actions, groups of Israelis have been lobbying against the UNRWA privately. Since the massacre, the IDF has killed UNRWA workers in its anti-terrorist operations, stressing that they were either involved with the massacre or were aiding Hamas in fighting in Gaza. Uh, you know, this, I've looked into this on depth when I was doing the um, exposés on Hamza Yusuf, who was the then Scottish First Minister, who overruled um, a ministerial decision and Department of External Affairs recommendations that when he asked for money to go to Gaza, they recommended and actually decided it should go to UNICEF. And he overturned that and gave the money to UNRWA, which... He informed Scottish ministers via an email, sorry, his off via an email that he just decided that I'm going to be meeting UNRWA in the next couple of days, so I'm just going to give them the, the money, which was a second tranche of money that went to UNRWA, which was bizarre because it was in a short space of time between that conflict kicking off and his in-laws being released from Gaza as they were over visiting his father-in-law's family at the time, his father-in-law is from Gaza. And they were remarkably released and managed to gain safe passage for the full length of Gaza to the Egyptian border and were released within 24 hours of the second tranche of money coming from the good people of Scotland to Gaza and to UNRWA more specifically. Apparently these things are all coincidence. So there you go, um, mind-blowing stuff. Absolutely mind blowing. Two things there: how UNRWA actually get chunks of money out, or, or sorry, Hamas get chunks of money out of UNRWA by basically taxing the wages of UNRWA employees. So the money they get paid, a lump comes off and goes to Hamas when they transfer it from dollars to shekels. And the fact that UN are <laughs> mind blowingly immune from prosecution, even when that includes charges of murder. So there you go. If you've enjoyed the video or the content of it, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please hit the subscribe and the notification bell. Put your comments below in the comments section. It's always good to get feedback on that. But most importantly of all, unless you're anybody who betrays the facade of being a charity worker, but you are indeed a terrorist, not you, but... Everyone else! Have a great day. Get it by now. <laughs>